Hi, hello, and welcome or welcome back to the Wool Sea Knitting Channel. My name is Rachel, I am your host, and this podcast is my chatty outlet to talk all things knitting with occasional guest appearances by other crafts. Today is Monday, June 17th. After work, it's like 32 degrees, hence the tank top and overalls, and I haven't filmed in about two months, and so I am so happy to be back. I have been itching to film for a while, but for so many different reasons, it just kept not working out. It's been a very, very busy season for me. I might include some personal chit chat at the end if you guys want to get some of those updates, but we'll see. Um, however, I have been knitting. I am always knitting. And there's so much I want to talk to you guys about, especially since I'm about to go on a big trip to Europe and in a couple days. <laughs> and I have some yarny bits for that trip. I'm meeting up with a knitting friend. I'm meeting up with Naomi of NJ Knits, who I've been chatting with online for like two, three years now. So it's going to be so wonderful to meet them in person. I have yarn stores I'm going to hit up. I have a list of European yarns that I'm hoping to get my hands on and some things to kind of do with this trip are in my things I'm going to show you. So I really wanted to get this out first and foremost because of one particular whip and also because I wanted to get back into the habit of filming. I think about it a lot. I just don't do it for a whole bunch of different reasons. But importantly, I have finished almost three sweaters, like two and then another inch of cuff. So the first and most important finished object of this video is my Georges Wrap by Colibri by Johanna, which I finished, I don't know, like a month, a month and a half ago. And I have just been kind of fiddling with the finishing touches of since then. Um, this is on a clothing hanger just for today, kind of to show you. And also because I went uh, ham on once again steaming the edges, the eye cord edges of the, the bow of this wrap top. And I wanted to have a little bit of weight as they dried to kind of again help with the uh, thing I'm trying to do, which is make these wrap ties longer, but I'm getting ahead of myself. This is a two strand of fluffy yarn wrap cardigan. Um, it's The wrap is tied into a bow, usually at the back. And this is for my friend Carolyn's wedding in a couple weeks. So my friend is also a knitter. I've talked about this at length and these yarns are hers. She gave them to me to knit, one of which we got together, this one. It's a Surrey silk. We got this together at Knit City Montreal last year. It's from Woolerton Estates. And then the other yarn is a Lanagato silk mohair that one of her other dear friends They've been friends for like over 10 years, brought her from Copenhagen where her friend lives. And I knit these together to make this wrap for her wedding. This is a wedding gift. She might wear it the day of if it's cool enough. I am under no illusions that this is like some super fancy important thing that she has to wear. This is a gift for her because she's getting married, not an obligation to wear on her wedding day, but I still wanted to get it done for that day. And so she can wear it on her honeymoon or around Germany etc because it's going to be a little bit cooler in the evenings where we're going and uh yeah this has been a labor of love i have been kind of struggling with how to talk about this pattern in my videos because if i'm honest i didn't like it i'm the one who sent it to carolyn and suggested it i thought it would be a super fast and easy knit because it's a 15 stitch gauge and i think it would be except these ties like it looks like another sleeve doesn't it like here's one sleeve and then here are the ties and there, it's like knitting four sleeves, but that part isn't difficult. There's just a lot of little things in this pattern that I think could have been explained a lot better. And at this point, I'm not a beginner knitter. And there are a few things that I talked about in my last video, like there's instructions that make it sound like you're supposed to maybe do something for every round, but then it's not clear, or there will be instructions for the very first stitch at the very end of a row of instructions. So you've already done a bunch of things before you read that. That didn't happen to me because I try and read through, but it's just little things that aren't quite standard notation and aren't quite the clearest way of doing things that I didn't love. I also found the construction of this to be a little bit confusing. In hindsight, if I were to do this again for myself, I think I would modify it 
because so the way that you do it i have it wrapped around the back so this is the front of the cardigan but also kind of the back it's fully reversible which i think is very cool and part of the reason why it appealed to carolyn is that she could wear it with the wrap tied in a big bow at the back like in all the pattern photos or she can wear it as a wrap cardigan in the front so this is sort of the front and it has this nice curved neckline. I took this off the hanger to be able to show you what this looks like as a garment and not just as a wall of fluff. There are a few parts of the construction of this garment that were done in ways that I kind of didn't understand why we did it a certain way as opposed to other ways that I thought would maybe have more benefits and would be more uh, engaging to knit, leave a little bit more structure and maybe fewer ends to weave in. Um, I don't mean to be so negative, it's just, I don't know, it's been a little while since I had this kind of like experience knitting a pattern. There's also one thing that I go back and forth on, which is knitting these ties. So you knit them back and forth after you knit the whole body and cast off, and you pick up here against what was a vertical line for the body and then knit horizontally back and forth out, and then decrease to create this like pretty bow effect. And in some ways, I think that that's good and clever because as the designer notes, this gets really heavy. So um, if you're knitting with two strands of the same yarn held together, you can drop one and create a much lighter tie and get a lot more usage out of your yarn. However, and I would have done that. However, I was knitting with two strands of different yarns together and if I had dropped either one of these, the color would have been completely different. So that left me having to do the two. I went up like three or four needle sizes to do the ties in an attempt to make them as lightweight as possible. And I think, I mean, it, it is a, a different gauge and I think you can kind of tell if you look, but it's not super obvious. The one thing is that this tie, the skein that I used, I didn't alternate, had a lot more speckles and splotches of the brownie taupe than um, the other. So that one and one of the sleeves has a lot more speckling in it. And then the other tie um, doesn't, but that's fine. I don't think it bothers Carolyn. And yeah, even though I did that, this tie is still, each tie is still pretty heavy and I hope that that doesn't make it unpleasant to wear. The designer does actually, you know, kind of warn against that in her pattern, so I can't fault her for that. One thing that does drive me crazy is the way that you do the I-cord edging is you, so the bottom of the body, you just cast off an I-cord. Super chill, super normal, looks beautiful. It's a very classic finish, I'm a fan. And the rest of the body is finished in I-cord too. What you do is you knit both the ties and then you start at one of the bottom corners where you have, you know, the connection to the body I cord and then you pick up all along the tie, all however many centimeters, and then you go up the body all the way around the body and then down the other tie and then back. I think it took me three days. I don't even know how many hundreds of stitches were on the needle. That's fine. I don't mind I cord that much. It was just kind of frustrating picking up the stitches because of something that I did, not because of the pattern. But I was looking at the needle size and the pickup rate that the designer suggested, and I thought that's going to be too tight on the ties. So I increased the pickup rate. So let's say it's not this in the pattern, but let's say the pickup rate for the ties was two out of every three stitches. I did four out of every five stitches to kind of increase the amount of fabric and, the, and decrease the amount of scrunching. And I also went up a couple needle sizes from what the I cord said. I don't think I have particularly tight I cord gauge, but I thought better safe than sorry. And thank God I did because the I cord ended up so tight on these ties regardless. I genuinely think I would have had to completely redo it if I had done like redid like the 600 odd stitches that I had total and the four days or three days of work of like monogamously knitting on the I cord to finish this. Had I gone with the suggested pickup rate, I cord tension is finicky. It's one of those things where, you know, people knit things differently. But um, I have blocked the crap out of this. I have soaked the ties twice. 
I have pinned them. I have spent time like literally like yanking them, like going like to try and get as much flexibility in the I cord as possible because beforehand it was puckering like crazy. And these kind of bits here were almost like bubbling around where the curve and the end of those ties are. It's worse on this one. I didn't manage to get all of it out. I think that will be okay in the final object. I think that having that kind of fold and bubble actually makes the bow look more like a bow or like a ribbon, if that makes sense, once it's tied in the way that it is in all of the designer's pattern photos in a big bow at the back. For that, I think totally fine. It's gonna be heavy, but fine. Okay, I realized that there was, one of my roommates was watching something in the back and it was likely that you guys could hear it. So um, I went to go close your door. We're back. Um, so yeah, for the tie as a bow, not a problem. For the tie as a wrap cardigan, that is a problem because the I cord shortened the overall length of each tie to the point where I started getting nervous that it wouldn't wrap around her waist all the way and that all <laughs> the effort of knitting this flat super long um, went kind of down the drain because it was now significantly shorter. So again, this morning I took my handheld steamer and steamed the ever-loving crap out of these ties, specifically just the I cord. And then while they were wet, one just it, and it has helped. It is, I don't think a perfect solution. If I could go back in time, I would tell myself to go up a bigger needle size on the ties on the body. I think it looks nice on the body, not a problem, but for, and I think that this helped cinch it in because otherwise it was looking like it was going to be a bit too big. Um, but no, I think if I could go back in time, I would tell a uh, previous Rachel that it's best to pick up more stitches and go up another needle size. But what's done is done. The fabric itself is Gorgina, in my opinion, and I think all of it is worth it if Carolyn likes it and it works. And it's meant to be worn two ways. She's much taller than me. And uh, this is... The, the delicate neck shaping, even if I didn't like how it was done, I think is very pretty. You can wear it like this with the bow in the back, or you can wear it like this as a wrap cardigan. And it'll be cutie patootie. That is the Georges by Colibri by Johanna. I think it ended up quite beautifully but I am kind of hesitant to go for any more of this designer's patterns over other similar patterns by other designers, just because there were just too many little things that I guess just didn't, you know, gel well with me. Um, I don't like being negative on the podcast. Not that I think I have a huge amount of influence over any of you. You guys are all independent thinkers, I'm sure. You know, Colibri by Ohana is an incredibly popular pattern designer. Clearly, I'm in the minority here, but there were some things about construction. There was a lot of information that I would have liked or information that I got but didn't feel like was helpful or strange construction notes that made me, I don't know. I just, it was kind of a frustrating experience. I was so happy to be making this thing for my dear friend, but this pattern in particular was kind of, I don't know, it's not the best for me. And I, I was kind of wavering over whether or not to say that I didn't like this pattern, you know, explicitly and concretely on the podcast because it never feels nice being like a negative person. But at the end of the day, my loyalty is to the viewers more so than it is to any particular designer because if any of you were to knit this based on my recommendation and then encounter the same problems that I had because I didn't say anything about it, then I feel like that is worse. So yeah, I think I saw after I got this pattern and opened it up and saw immediately a bunch of strange things, I went to Ravelry and saw a whole bunch of other people's pattern notes said a bunch of things that they found difficult about the pattern, but the end result always was, but I like the final object. I feel the same way. And I think that you might very well also enjoy the final object as long as you go in eyes wide open and are not a beginner knitter. 
So uh, on that note, I have one more finished object and it is my storm sweater that I started in what, December? I finished it a month ago and I really like it. I've been wearing it kind of whenever possible, including underneath these overalls sometimes, which makes me feel very fun and pretty and comfy. And I, gosh, where was I with this the last time we talked? So I know that I cut, it's okay. I, because I keep tucking it into these short overalls, I, um, the bottom is kind of rumpled, but so sorry about that. But the last time we talked, I think I had identified the fact that this was too long and that my plan was to cut out two panels of pattern, like two pattern repeats. Uh, and then graft it back together. I don't know if I had done that already. I think I did that after I filmed my last video. The point is I did it, so it's shorter now. And I'm so glad, glad that I did. It was not a very long process. The only issue I experienced is I cut the wrong stitch at one point as I was pew 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 pew, pew because I got overly confident. And so I kind of awkwardly sewed it up after failing to felt it back into place. Here, do you see it? It's kind of lumpy. So it's a little bit felted, a little bit sewn into place. Um, however, the nubbly stitch pattern of this combined with this sort of rustic texture of wool hides it. Also the fact that it's at the bottom hem at my hip hides it. I also blocked this in a way that didn't leave it very smooth on purpose because I had blocked the body months ago to see how the yarn was holding up in the stitch pattern because this yarn changes a lot in blocking. And I blocked it too aggressively and it had these super hardcore seams on either side that I did not like and it hung really weirdly and just kind of threw off the whole fit of the sweater, literally just like from blocking and, and having it folded as it dried. And so I tried to just kind of keep moving it and, and rumpling a little, it a little bit while it dried the second time, and that worked out really well. I don't think you can tell that it's been cut and grafted. And yeah, I really like the sleeve length. I like this pattern. I thought it was a lot of fun. It took me forever because a whole bunch of other things were my priority and that weird fold line and the way that it looked before when it was too long and then just a rectangle on me with these two aggressive fold lines on either side made me not as interested in the final object. But since it's been fixed, the second it gets even a little bit cold, I run for my storm sweater. The fact that it's not currently in storage, I think, tells you a lot about how much I've been choosing to wear it. It's 32 degrees out right now, and I still haven't put it away. So yeah, I shall put it on for you for a bit as proof of my dedication to this podcast, because that is 100% untreated wool, and um, it's really warm. Also, this is my As Friends tank by Jessie May Designs. I think it's an underrated pattern of hers. I think it's a great easy basic tank top and it's a more size inclusive what's that summer tank with the round neck that petite knit released two years ago that one so this is what it looks like i didn't go back and fix the part of the folded neckband that's slanted i find that it's usually covered by my hair and i don't care but for the sake of actively of properly showing you fit i'm leaving my hair tucked but yeah, my hips are here. So this is technically cropped and I really like the fit of it. I think it looks good with long pants. I think it's very fun with my short alls on top and I'm a huge fan. I'm really happy with where the sleeves ended up. I have been making an effort to knit my sleeves longer because I find that they shrink and I keep having to go back and lengthen the sleeves. And overall, I would say two thumbs up. I'm very happy with it. It was a fun experience and I really like the finished object. I really think it's such a fun take on the classic white cabled sweater, but with a little bit more of a modern sensibility to it. And I'm a fan. My notes tell me that this took exactly 422 grams of yarn for a DK weight sweater that's kind of cropped 
like above hip length on a short person. I'm 5'1", 5'2", about 156 centimeters. And I like the heft of it. I like the casual vibe of it. I think it's pretty and I hope it lasts me a very long time. I think those are all my finished objects. I did go back and do some mending here and there, but that's not super interesting to you guys. And I spent some time lengthening the sleeves and body of a sweater that I made myself and was going to unravel, the, but then my mom wanted it and it looked really good on her, except it was too short. So that used up some yarn from Stash for a very good purpose and that made me really happy, but I don't have it to show you. And I think that's really just, I think what's left is just whips. Oh, I have a crochet whip, but it's not interesting enough to show you yet. Which brings me to my almost finished object, which if I was a stronger woman would be done for this podcast. Uh, however, I have about an inch, maybe an inch and a half left to go. So this is my Yanni by Orlan Souk of Tete Beche Knitwear. It's my first Orlan Souk pattern. And it came out this spring, I think. It's a relatively newer release of hers. And I love it. I love it so much. I've loved making it. I redid this sleeve, I'm not kidding, three times, and I still love this pattern. Uh, that was user error, not Orlan Souk error, in my opinion. And I just think it's so fun. So, okay, what this sweater is, is it's a saddle shoulder but you knit it top down in the round. It's not like the lakes or the My Favorite Things knitwear patterns with the big saddles that look like the lakes series. What is it? Cardigan number nine and T number one, the same vibe. So it's not like you knit a saddle and then put it on hold and then pick up the back and then knit and then pick up the front and then knit and then connect like a drop shoulder. This is knit more like a raglan, which I understand is more like the April Petite Knit April Cardigan style of saddle shoulder. I hope I'm correct. I haven't knit that pattern, but I have it. And I think that that's how it is, if that makes sense. So you're increasing on either side of these lines and then you change the increase rate for this super dramatic voluminous sleeve. And I enjoyed that. First of all, I just enjoy the look of these. Uh, my love of a big chunky saddle shoulder is well documented on this channel. Um, but also I just really enjoyed the knitting experience. It was a fun way to knit something top down in the round without feeling like, I don't know, another raglan. That's not to say I don't love a top down in the round raglan. Don't get me wrong, I do. But it's sometimes fun to have something that's similar but with a twist. And then just as, you know, some things start to get a little dull, you switch for this. And this kept things really interesting because the rate of increases changes a little bit and the instructions change. And then you pick up and knit the collar afterwards which I like because this is a worsted to Aran weight pattern. I think it's a 16 stitch gauge. And without any sort of seams like you do in the lakes or other like drop down ones to add some stability where you have the picked up stitches, I like that that kind of adds some structure at the neck. And you have this statement bind off, which is written into the pattern and I like. And mine currently is fitting more like a mock neck unblocked. I think it might really like loosen up a little bit and relax, which I think looks pretty in the tester versions that had that happen. But I also think that the mock neck also looks quite pretty. And I want that statement bind off neck to be visible. Two by two ribs, also very fun and cute. And then you have these dramatic sleeves and this dramatic waist and it's cropped and it's fun. And I love it. <laughs> the second I saw it, I had to make it. I knew it. And yeah, I have just the last bit of the cuff to go and blocking. It is my hope that I will be able to block this and have it dry in time so I can take it to London, but I don't know if that's gonna work. It is so hot, but it's also, I live in a river city and it's always swampy and I don't know if the humidity is going to allow that, but fingers crossed friends. I'm knitting this in some Olan organic Aran yarn found the ball band. Um, I'm knitting this in some Olan yarn, which is a brand that doesn't exist anymore. They were Irish and this was their organic Aran base. It's hundred percent Peruvian organic Merino, a worsted weight in the color slow. And it's 166 meters per hundred grams. Um, I got this secondhand 
at Knitomatic as part of their in-person only leftovers from their yarn swaps that they do um, to support the Red Door Family Shelter. Any yarn that's not picked up is sold in store and all at a discounted price and all the proceeds go to the Red Door Family Shelter in Toronto, which is great. And there are some real gems in there. And one time I found five skeins of this Olan and I had wanted to try Olan before they ceased operations and then never got the chance. So I bought those five skeins and didn't think that 166 times five would get in, in a worsted would get me enough for a sweater, but I, it looks like it will. This is my last skein. And as you can see, I have most of it left and I'm at the last inch of cuff. That is in part because this is such a cropped sweater this goes so far unblocked to slightly below my belly button, which is on purpose. Um, but no, I'm expecting to have quite a bit left over, which is kind of annoying, but also kind of good for mending or lengthening, I've learned for the many times I've had to do that recently. So I'm going to, can you see kind of overall the silhouette? Again, I liked the shaping. Uh, one thing I realized like literally two days ago is that the first skein I used was a lot stripier than all the others. So you can very clearly see on the yoke where I ran out of that first skein. And it's not like that anywhere else, but that's okay. I also found that when I did my swatch, the dye bled quite a bit. So I'm hoping that maybe that'll happen when I block it. And then either those little stripes will kind of blur out or become more uniform. But I'm really excited about this. I really enjoyed the pattern writing and I really like the style and I like a lot of the little details. There are a couple of things that I changed. For example, I'm short. Uh, like I said, I'm 5'1 slash 156 centimeters or I'm like 5'1 and a half. And I was getting nervous about how deep this yoke is. I mean, that's the whole point of the sweater. It's something that really appealed to me in it. I'm going to put it on for you. You know what? I'm going to talk and then I'm going to put it on. That was something that really appealed to me about this was the really dramatic silhouette, that kind of like dolman or bat wing sleeve. That's my impression of a bat. And going with the, the cinching to the waist, it felt kind of 80s. I really liked it. I wanted it. The thing is, is I think that this is graded for someone with a longer torso than me. And it was coming to a point where I was concerned that the underarm was going to be very close to my armpit. And then that I didn't want because that becomes a lot less functional and you know you raise your arm to like grab something and then your entire torso is visible first of all that's cold second of all I don't need the whole world to see my bra most of the time and so I did speed up the rate of increases at the bottom here I don't know if you guys can tell it almost turns more into a raglan down here And then I think I just skipped the last couple rounds of increases because I was getting nervous that I was running out of space. I'm also knitting this off gauge on purpose. I think I'm knitting this at an 18 stitch gauge because that was the fabric that I liked and I found to be best for this yarn. I tried going up to hit a 16 and I just didn't like it. It was too gappy. And the thicker the fabric, typically the longer it lasts. But I mean, that's not a hard and fast rule. So even with that and being like a little bit off row gauge, or no, my stitch gauge was small, but my row gauge was close, but it was still a bit smaller. Um, and so I was like, this is gonna be too long. And even then, I'll show you what this looks like on unblocked. Here's my armpit. And then here's where this ends. And I think this is correct. At this point in time, pre-blocking, I'm happy with that modification. And you can see my belly button's here. It ends right there and the sleeves. And this is kind of the vibe. I think it's meant to be a bit baggier. I'll get a little bit more of that in blocking, but I'm very happy with this as it is right now. I'm seeing a lot of puckering right here. And I think that only started after I put in the neck. I don't remember it from when I tried it on before adding the collar, even though it looks like it's puckering because of the increases. I'm kind of expecting that to block out. I'm not too worried about it at this point point in time we'll see and then as you can see this is kind of sticking straight up like a mock neck I think it'll relax out a little bit more but I'm not sure 
I also tried to make the sleeves a bit longer because of my ongoing sleeve shrinkage issues. Uh, you can also see variable dye lots across this thing. I don't really mind at this point. Maybe it'll bother me later, but right now it's I don't. And yeah, so this is my Yanni thus far. And I kind of look like a bat in this color with my hair tucked. I did go in advance of starting that to wool time with a friend here in Ottawa to get a sixth skein of yarn that's the exact same weight and fiber content. Well, it was Shetland as opposed to organic Peruvian Highland Merino, but in a, in a complementary color to do the cuffs, hem, and collar to kind of extend the yarn because I didn't think I was going to have enough of the Olan. And I do. So instead I just have that skein of yarn for, I don't know, probably a midden at some point. And so my plan is to finish the Yanni tonight, set it out to block, hope it dries before I have to put it away, either to bring it to Europe with me or to put it in storage away from moths and beetles while I'm gone for the next couple weeks of summer. My next whip is also a sweater and I have much less of it to show you. This is my Beauty School Top by Poison Girl Knits. And I'm working on the front panel, but all of it's in stockinette, so it's curling like crazy. And this is a fingering weight, fitted, vintage style sweater. This is yarn that I got at Knit City Montreal last year. It is Orso Yarn Co. It's their BFL base, and it's a kind of thicker fingering weight. And I only had two skeins, so I thought that this kind of more fitted sweater would be a better move. Uh, now that it's hot and I'm feeling it, I'm really worried that I'm not gonna wanna wear it when it's warmer, but you know, I'm obviously not gonna be wearing wool in 32 degrees. I'll be wearing wool in like 20 degrees. And I am just shaping the front and moving on. In all honesty, I haven't worked on this in like three weeks. I worked on it a lot during my last trip to Toronto, but not much since because the Yanni has really been my focus, as well as a couple other like, you know, little whips here and there that I'll show you in a bit that are less exciting than garments. I am strongly considering taking this with me as my travel knit because I think that it's a good, it's very small. I don't need to pack a lot of yarn and it has a good mix of just a lot of stockinette plus shaping here and there to get the precise fit. Here's what the ball looks like. And I think two of these would very much would fit easily in my suitcase. So this is a pretty strong contender. There's a part of me that says pack something special and new as like your Europe trip project but realistically the point of this is not to spend the whole time knitting it's to go and do fun things and i think i'll feel better if i just clear a couple whips while i'm doing it so hopefully the next time we talk i'll have a lot more to show you on this like at the very least a connected torso and i don't expect it to take very long because even though it's knit at a fingering weight gauge i think it's like a 26 or 27 stitch gauge it's so fitted that it kind of goes really fast anyway so yeah and i think it's so pretty one thing is is i just completely messed up the back when i first started and i did the shaping like the short row shaping to shape the neck at the shoulders instead like i connected it out of order like this piece was over here and this piece was over here so i had to rip out pretty much the entire back panel and redo it and that would have been frustrating but again it, it moves pretty fast because it's not a big garment so yeah. Oh, the Yanni is pretty size inclusive. I think it goes up to a 62 inch bust and in like how um, like true bust, like the bust of the person who's wearing it, not finished bust of the garment with all the positive ease. This one I think only goes up to a two or three XL, which is a bummer. Um, but yeah, those are my sweater whips. I am not very into summer knitting in terms of like garments right now. I love this summer garment. But I don't know, I've had really hit or miss luck with them. And I find that even in cotton, if it's anything heavier than a fingering weight one like this, I find that it looks ratty a little bit faster. And even if it's not wool, having like a DK 
or a worsted still feels kind of heavy on my skin a lot of the time. I have two cotton tank tops that I knit myself in a worsted or an Erin a couple years back. My drinks, drinks on the patio crops that I still wear all the time and I love, but they're kind of the exceptions, not the rule. And I really hurt my wrists and couldn't knit for weeks last year because of the silk cumulus tee and not taking breaks and not respecting my body and not understanding that silk is just kind of a no-go for me. And even then like that finished object doesn't fit super comfortably. And so I think I'm just going to take a break and explore other options and continue to use stuff I have in stash and sweaters that I will wear in a few months, not immediately. And um, that's kind of how I am right now. I do feel a little bit like, oh, it's probably not gonna be super interesting to the vast majority of my viewership that I know is mostly also in the Northern hemisphere to be seeing sweaters completely out of season, but that's the reality of what I'm knitting right now. Another thing that I'm knitting completely out of season and that I'm pretty sure I will take with me on my trip as a more thinky project is the pair of flora mitts I have been working on sporadically for, again, since like way before the last time we talked. I have gotten a little bit of progress in, but these are mittens. Knit in British wool and Erica Knight. I am almost done shaping the thumb. I have a little European honeybee stitch marker to go along with the British wool. And I really enjoy these when I work on them, but they haven't been my priority. And I feel like this might be really fun to bring with me, uh, except these two balls feel kind of big to bring. Like, okay, if I bring two of these for the sweater, I know that almost every inch of that is going to go into the sweater. So I won't be taking back big balls of yarn, but I know that not all of this and it's twin this will make it into the mitten and then i'm like okay am i just then carrying around balls of yarn is this the most efficient thing i don't know but again like i said i like the idea of knitting the british wool for the time i will spend in britain and then i like maybe just continuing to work on whips one that requires attention one that for the most part does not now that i've done the shaping bits and i'm thinking that these will be my travel whips. Uh, yeah, I continue to enjoy this pattern. It's pretty bare bones, but you don't really need a lot of instruction because it's mostly just knitting from a chart and then adjusting the gauge as you go. And I like it. I think it's coming up really nicely. I did switch the color dominance. As you can see, I'm experiencing puckering in the color work. I'm not overly concerned. It is a little bit lower contrast than I was expecting, but that's okay. I still think it's gonna look really nice, but down here in this edging bit, I held it so my tension would make the blue the dominant color. And then up here, I've switched to make the pink the dominant color. I don't know if you can tell on camera, I can tell personally and that's just what i like uh, i understand that the color dominance is kind of some people say there's no such thing as color dominance it's just whether or not you have good tension um but it, apparently i don't have good color work tension despite my ongoing love affair of color work and so i am able to switch which is my dominant color to achieve slightly different effects that i want which is nice and then these will be done for the fall <laughs> when two stranded um thick woolly British wool mittens will be great for me. And yeah, those are all my whips. I have a little bit of acquisitions. I almost made it two months without buying any yarn. And then I was in Wabi Sabi last weekend buying a birthday gift for a friend. And I saw this new yarn that they had and I got a sweater's quantity. It's a DK weight in this gorgeous steely icy blue. And this is Etrophil Blue Face Luster Wool. It's 100 grams, it's mus musling free, of pure BFL, British BFL. Uh, this is kind of confusing. Why does it say machine washable? Is this super, it really doesn't feel like super wash. Oh, it's saying on like a wool or a delicate cycle. Okay, that makes more sense. Um, it's made in Turkey, it's spun in Turkey, it's designed in Italy, 
and it's British wool. And it's the color pale gray and it's 100% wool. And this is a DK weight. It is uh, 240 meters and 100 grams. I got four to make a sweater. I have a sweater in mind, but it's self-drafted, so I'm not sure if I'm going to get around to it because I'm actually, I don't think, very good at that kind of thing. But I really want it, and I want it in this color, and that's why I got it. I was going to do something similar with a very similar shade of wool and a completely different fiber content and weight, but then I ended up giving that sweater to my mom, so it was really nice to get this. Also, importantly, this is 100 grams of uh, British BFL for 10 Canadian dollars. That is not easy to find, and that is not easy to achieve. And I don't find this super scratchy. And have I mentioned it's 32 degrees right now? So that's meaningful. So I spent $40 and I got these. And plus the other two that are in the bin, I just grabbed two as props. So yeah, I got these two, pretty excited. I think it'll look nice on me and I know what I want out of it. And I'm excited to make that once I'm done, these guys. That you saw before. I also received some yarn for my birthday. I turned 27 at the beginning of June and my roommate Nicole got me these two yarns from the Almont yarn store. Almont is a very cute town outside of Ottawa and she's from nearby. She's actually born in Almont. Uh, and so this is Universal Yarn Noel. It is 20, it's one of those blown yarns and it's 26% baby alpaca, 26% merino wool, 29% polyester and 29% nylon. And I think that some of that is Stellina cause look at this. And it's in the color Lynette and she got me two of these and they're so pretty. So I think this will be a really fun winter accessory. I have been looking at what other people have made with this to get a sense of it. I think that would be certainly really nice and fun squishy mittens and then maybe a hat too. I think I could get enough out of these two balls and I think they'd be pretty fun and fast in it. So those are my yarn acquisitions. And then I just have a bunch of gifts. Um, so for my birthday, Two of my best friends from high school got me this yarn bowl, which is handmade by their mother's friend's mother. And I don't have a yarn bowl. This is my first one. So it was a really, really top-notch gift. I thought they really nailed it. And this is Sandy Dunkelman handcrafted pottery. And then it doesn't appear that Sandy Dunkelman has a website, but here's her business card. You can also message me if you're in the Toronto area and you want one, and I'll send you the business card info. But I've been using this a lot. Normally, I, it's really easy to just kind of carry around with me, and it's usually on the coffee table while I knit. And it saved me a lot of running across the room to get a ball of yarn that has started rolling across the floor. So I'm pretty pleased and I think it's gorgeous. And it's a really good size, so yeah. And then my boyfriend's mother went to Ireland a month or so ago and got me a couple really cute things. The first is she got me these woven buttons that I think are so fun and funky. These are Brenda Hewitt hand weaver and I really like them. I was tempted to take off the buttons of my beige field day jacket and put these on instead. But I think I kind of want to do something different to showcase these buttons. Uh, I really have no shortage of need for cardigans. So I think that this will be really nice. And I just love the texture and the colors. I think they're really fun. And I'm honestly just so touched that she thought of me while she was there. Another thing she got me was this fun pin. It's a sheep and it's wrapped in yarn by Lizzie C. And yeah, I'm gonna put this on my tote bag, but I couldn't until I showed you guys. So those are all my acquisitions. That's actually all my everything. I shudder to think how long this video is with all my running around to grab different things and deal with some uh, bloopers and stuff happening in the back. 
In terms of life updates, the major one, besides the fact that I got these short overalls and have made them a big part of my personality, is that I got laser eye surgery, like corrective vision surgery. Uh, totally elective. Um, I got PRK, which is an, not LASIK, but similar to LASIK, but with a more intense recovery period because I wasn't, wasn't a good candidate for LASIK. So for those of you who know, I got PRK, and for the rest of you, I got corrective laser eye surgery. And that's been kind of a major game changer for me. I'm so happy I got it. I had my six week checkup actually today, and I'm actually seeing 2015 far away. Up close, things are still kind of blurry. I have to have my phone. I increased the font like twice and made it bold. And I know that it's gonna take another month and a half for that to start to, to fully recover. But far away, I'm seeing 2015 with both my eyes and I'm seeing 2020 with either eye, according to the doctors. And I feel that when I look around and it's just been really freeing. I used to have a negative six prescription in this eye and a negative 3.75 prescription in this eye plus an astigmatism. And listen, I know that that's not that big of a deal. I know a lot of other people are wearing glasses and contacts for much more significant prescriptions than I, but I have long been looking forward to having corrective vision surgery both my parents had it like 20 years ago at this point back when it was still kind of a newer thing and had nothing but good things to say about it they also had at least negative six in one uh, at least negative six in one eye um and i feel like that's just a really strong endorsement like and also 20 years of experience and you know now they maybe need reading glasses or glasses for driving depending on which person but that's just such a difference than like having to wear glasses to read my phone or look out the window or read my laptop screen or do anything and i've spent a lot of the past month uh doing different things that were always just kind of annoying with glasses like jogging i have been jogging um just because i can i don't particularly enjoy it but i enjoy that i can without the glasses bumping up and down on my nose or sliding down or getting kind of sweaty or having to carry like so many different pairs of contact lens case um prescription free sunglasses, um, emergency backup glasses if something happened to the contact lenses, um, prescription sunglasses. I like being able to see in the shower. I clean the shower more because so I can actually see how gross it gets a lot faster. And yeah, and so that's been a big like financial goal for me for a while and just personal goal. So I'm really, really happy that I did it. And if you have any questions on getting PRK surgery, let me know. I'm happy to answer. You can message me on Instagram. I have it back again to contact people. So you have a better chance of me responding in a timely manner right now than normal when I'm just checking it on desktop every couple weeks. Um, I also officially convocated for my master's. I got my degree last summer, but they canceled the fall and winter convocations. But it was nice because it meant that everybody in my cohort got to convocate together because we all finished at different times and it was like a little reunion. And then I had a bunch of family stuff go on. I went to my first ever wedding. That was a lot of fun. And it's just been a busy t season, but a good one and I'm doing well, and I hope that all of you guys are too. So be prepared for a video coming to you soon with a lot of excitement post Europe. I have a, my eye on a few yarns that I wanna get there, but I don't wanna go overboard because I'm still working down my stash and I have a lot of what I need and what I want. And it's been really ha useful for me for the past six months to say i don't need to buy this i can buy yarn in europe i want to save closet space and money to buy yarns in europe but now that i'm actually about to go to europe i don't know how much i'll buy famous last words we'll see but okay so i'm hoping to talk to you guys again sooner rather than later and i'm wishing you i don't know a good summer in the northern hemisphere and a good winter in the southern okay bye talk soon